All right, guys, welcome to 3 John 1. One chapter, and this is the last chapter in this series. Um, I, I wish there had been more to 2nd and 3rd John, but I guess the Lord thought that would be more than enough. And they're short chapters, but there's still very important information in there, and they're still important for us to read. Again, you know John is <clears throat> very unique among his peers because he had a very close relationship with Jesus. He knew better what Jesus was talking about. The elder to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. For I rejoiced greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, just as you walk in the truth. John, it was very important to him. This is why when I hear about the stuff <coughs> that um, Iranus wrote down, who studied under Polycarp, Polycarp, who studied uh, directly under John, when Iranus talked about, he used to see this old, old man that would come out, and he was pretty sure it was John, that John was very straightforward in the truth. And he would talk to people who were up-and-coming ministers or people who were believers, and he would ask them certain things. And if they didn't have it right, he would have nothing to do with them anymore. He was big on truth. Well, I think this is a quality all Christians have to have. Now, keep in mind, at this day and age, things are extremely muddled as far as what truth is. But there's still a level of integrity we can we can hold everybody to and ourselves. And I used to have people, when, when I was on Facebook years ago, I used to have people all the time, because I, I would complain about people. You can't expect people to be the way you want them to be. And I said, no, you're right. And this was family that was telling me this. I said, no, you're right. But what I can't expect is for people to have a certain level of integrity and truth. And if they can't meet that standard, then I don't want them in, their li in my life because that means I can't trust them. However, they would respond back with being okay with that. I said, well, unfortunately, I'm not. Consequently, I don't talk to very many people because they don't hold that level of integrity. You know, the Lord said he's, we're supposed to hate the things. You know, at some point we should come to the point where we hate the Proverbs, uh, Psalms, Psalms. I hate the things you hate. We're supposed to hate the things he hates and not have anything to do with them, to shun those things. Because what those things ultimately are going to do is bring us out of there. Now, there are certain circumstances where we're evangelizing with the lives we live. I put that post on the community tab from A.W. Pink last night. That's an amazing post. And it applies. But there's some things we should not have anything to do with. There's sometimes we need to just push people away and say, no, 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 no. You are going to do everything you can to destroy this. I'm going to live for God and you watch me live for God and then you can change. But obviously, you know, I can't have any specific interactions with you. Now, some people, it's a different story. Children, you, you know, children are a little different to, to deal with. But some people are just blatant in what they're doing. You have nothing to do with them. Others are on the fence. You, Those are the ones you work with. But John was big on truth. Big on it. Integrity was a big thing, just like we talked about this morning. Verse 4, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren and for strangers who have borne witness of your love before the church, the life that they're living, that the evidence of their salvation is present in their actions. I know people hate that term, but it's right here. They're showing the evidence of their salvation. If you send them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of God, you will do well because they went forth for his name's sake, taking nothing from the Gentiles. At this time, Gentiles meant unbeliever. We therefore ought to receive such, that we may become fellow workers for the truth. I wrote to the church, but Diotrephes, who loves to have the preeminence among them, did not receive us. This is a guy who thought he had it all. Thought he had it, he, he was, thought he was the head honcho. No. Nope. Verse 10, therefore, if I come, I will call to mind his deeds, which he does, prating against us with malicious words, and not content with that he himself does not receive the brethren, <clears throat> and forbids those who wish to, putting them out of the church. So basically he's running the show and doing it wrong. There's a lot of diatrophies running around churches today. Beloved, do not imitate what is evil, 
but what is good. He who does good is of God, but he who does evil has not seen God. John was making it very clear throughout all of his writings, even to this last chapter. Look at what they're doing. If what they're doing isn't right, that's a problem with that person. Even if they are a believer, it's a problem with that person. Simon the Magician. The Bible specifically says he believed and was baptized, and the man still messed it up. So we don't imitate what we see the people doing wrong. We have to stand our ground on what we know is right. What's right? What the Word says. We go by what the Bible says. That's what's right. And so we use that as our standard, which is what John is giving us here, even in this last chapter. He's making it clear. Don't do. Don't imitate what's evil. Imitate what's good. Do what's good. That is evidence of your conversion. And it is an external expression of that. Verse 12. Demetrius has a good testimony from all and from the truth itself. And we also bear witness. And you know that our testimony is true. This, this is a, a supposition type thing. You know what we're saying is true. I had many things to write, but I do not wish to write to you with pen and ink. But I hope to see you shortly, and we shall speak face to face. Peace to you. Our friends greet you. Greet the friends by name. Know what their name is. So it's very evident, just like we talked about this morning, God doesn't change. John very much is, this is what we're supposed to be doing. Do not deviate from this. Because if you do, you now risk going into lies. You risk going into uh, uh, falsities. You risk going into um, all forms of negative. False doctrines. False worship. Things of the world. We are to find out what the things of the world are and avoid them. Does the world price gouge? Yep, we're not to do that. Does the world charge too much interest, as the Bible calls it, it's usury? Yep, we're not to do that. So it's super important that we be very careful that the things of the world... Now, keep again, I, I always try to make sure I mention, keep in mind, there are some things we can't help because it's the way the world is. This is how we operate in the world. But we can do them in, in a manner of truth and integrity. So we have to be diligent. And if it's some situations we can't change, situations that we can't adjust so that we may operate in them, we've got to get out of it. Because if the situation, the job, the, the environment does not allow us to act in a form of truth and integrity, we've got to get away from it. That's why the Lord took me out of the military. There's no truth or integrity there at all. They preach integrity all day. There is no truth and integrity there. It's a bunch of high school bullies that never grew up that figured how they can work a system to work to their benefit. And boy, do they use it. And if you don't play ball with them, if you don't go along with the show, you are out. You cannot survive as somebody doing truth in there. You have to be a liar and a cheater in order to succeed in the military. And I can tell you stories about my leadership and some of the horrible things I witnessed happen. But at their hand, the Lord took me out of it. So more and more, I don't worry too much about this sickness I have and these issues. Because I know why they're, why they're there. Because it was a real blessing to get them. Because it took me away from that environment. It kept me out of that. Just like most other businesses, how they want you to do the same thing. I can't do that. When I worked at Motorola all them years ago, I was asked to just push this stuff through. I can't do that. This is going to go in somebody's car. And if this fails, not only does it come back on me... But that's a family stranded on the side of the road. No, I can't do that. Almost got fired a couple times for that. For doing the right thing. The statement, just do what you're told. I cannot do that. That's not right. And I even in the military called out that stuff in front of a couple of first sergeants. Because... NCOs would say this, and I, I can't do that. And they would take me to the first sergeant. And the first sergeant would say, why can't you just do what you're told? First sergeant, that doesn't follow along with the soldier's creed, the NCO's creed, or integrity. 
which is what we're taught every day. I cannot do that. Because then that would mean for me to violate the trust of everybody above me and below me. The room got quiet real quick when I said that. Get out of my office. And I left. And then I didn't get in trouble. Because they knew. But what I did end up getting is a whole lot of grief after the fact. And so I was bumped around and bounced around until they found a place where they could put me where people would leave me alone. And then I got sick and the Lord took me out of the situation. Because there was no way I was going to succeed. No way. And I still catch grief. You would have done fine if you hadn't gotten sick. No. Because you didn't see what I saw. You didn't experience what I experienced. There's things like my wife is, used to be bad about that. And I told her that there's stuff, there's stuff I haven't told you that happened in there. I think it's good for a lot of people, especially young people, get started in there. But you got to make sure you hang on to what you know is true. I tell them, don't join the army. If you're going to do anything, join either the Marines or the Air Force. But even then, even then, it's just, it, it's a garbage system that we have because, and a lot of police agencies are the same way. There's really good officers stuck in some really bad departments. Integrity. Most of the world does not have it. Truth. Most of the world doesn't want it. We, as Christians, are such a unique individual cross-section of the culture. Because we exist in an environment that doesn't allow us to exist. We exist somewhere. It's like taking a fish, not only taking a fish out of the water where its natural environment is, but placing it on a bed of sand in an oven with lava rocks around it and boiling water poured off the top with the oven turned full blast and a blowtorch. Literally the most alien environment you can possibly get. I don't know. But I know one thing, this is an alien world to us. And it's never going to be anything more than that until the Lord comes back. When the Lord comes back, different story. But right now, we have something to do. Show the world what real truth looks like. Show the world what a real Christian looks like to the best of our ability. And we do that by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so, like John reiterates over and over again in his writings, truth, truth, stand in truth. It is a great comfort to other believers when you stand in truth. I try to be as truthful with you guys as I can. I literally stayed up too late, and I sleep too late, and I'm up and down a lot. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I have a problem sleeping, I always have. But I'm not going to give up on what I'm doing, that's for sure. Because I don't want to. I love doing this. And if this is how I can serve the Lord, then I'll serve the Lord this way. So guys, that was John, all his writings. This is th three John. That's it. I don't know where else we're going from here. We'll see. I'm going to uh, let the Lord um, show me what to do next, and then we'll dip into that, and we'll see where we end up. Because I've noticed that there's a continuity to how he's putting all this together. And so today is no different. So uh, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna let him lead me into the next one, if there is going to be the next one. I don't know. But I tell you what, the way we're going, we're going to get most of the Bible down on video. That's okay with me. People need more access anyway to viewable content. It seems today that there's just not that much of it. Guys, I love you all very much. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.